and for Bridge has been a very difficult ground for Chelsea, yet it's their home stadium. Last weekend's fixture between Chelsea and Brentford showcased this, with Brentford coming away with a win at Stamford Bridge, something that they have done in three consecutive seasons. This is not to take away from Brentford who have been excellent playing against top sides. Last season, they were the only team to do a double over Manchester City. The 2-0 defeat that Chelsea suffered from Brentford was quite humiliating because Chelsea had actually prepared a very strong performance as against Arsenal in the home fixture at Stamford Bridge, only to fall to Brentford. The statistics showcase how Brentford dominated this game. So Chelsea dominated uh, the game through possession as usual, but Brentford, like many lower block teams that come to Stamford Bridge, understand one thing about Chelsea. Chelsea struggled to break lower blocks. From these stats here, you can clearly see how Brentford actually had most shots on target, yet they have very few possession stats. So Chelsea were limited only to two shots on target, a very horrendous start. So Pochettino was seen time and time again showcasing his frustration in the touchline. But the form that Chelsea have had at Stamford Bridge has been abysmal. Losing, to game, losing games such as Nottingham Forest, Aston Villa, games where Chelsea should have won comfortably. But is this the Mauricio Pochettino problem at the bridge? But I've done videos upon videos to explain this problem that Chelsea struggle against lower blocks. So do not forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. So in the videos that I've done, I've explained why Chelsea struggle against these lower blocks. So I've pinned down two videos that I did because I'm sounding like a broken record to explain this problem at Chelsea. Because of their pacey front three and the ability of them to play these long balls in behind as we saw in the West Ham game, West Ham decided to sit deep to close this gap. And this is what many mid blocks and lower blocks teams do, forming banks of four in front of their goal line. So Sterling and Chilol were tasked to give width to the team, with Thiago Silva, De Sassi and Colwell forming the back three. Now, the issue with these two banks of four is that they like to condense the space in between the lines and you only find Nicholas Jackson as the only person occupying this position. So you will find Enzo roaming around all over the pitch, but Chelsea are not exploiting the center of the pitch. Now, you can see that Pochettino prefers building with a back from this clip. This is a clip of his Tottenham team back in the days. Pochettino likes his center backs to form back three with one holding midfielder dropping deep. This was aided by Eric Dyer dropping in between the two center backs. And you saw Pochettino likes to pick players over the top when opposition decide to press high. Pochettino's teams like to have high and wide wing backs with two holding midfielders. Full backs or wing backs are a crucial component of a Pochettino system since they are the ones who are required to generate width. Unlike Manchester City who prefer having their wingers wide, Pochettino prefers having his wing backs wide, with midfielders occupying the central zone. So another problem that is in the Pochettino system is Enzo Fernandez. Enzo Fernandez is an incredible player, but his shooting accuracy is quite poor in the final third. Therefore, Chelsea need a player who is excellent at shooting and scoring goals. Enzo Fernandez can use his incredible build-up and, and vision in deeper positions to link up play. In some instances, Raheem Sterling tries to run at the fullback, but he doesn't have the support and therefore most of the times he gets cornered by the fullback since there's no other player who is occupying the half spaces. So when he decides to occupy the half spaces, the only thing that Gusto can do is just make these crosses, which teams in lower blocks have excellent center backs in winning these headed balls.
and immediately launch quick counter attacks against Chelsea. Therefore, Chelsea usually have at least two players during these attacking phases of play, with the wing backs generating width. But the problem is you're not going to get Chilwell taking a fullback 1v1 and most of the time he will lose the ball. Therefore, wing backs are only accurate in making these crosses. And since Chelsea only has one player who is tall enough to win these crosses against two aerially dominant center backs, the option of crosses is not good for Chelsea. And sometimes Chelsea create side overloads, but these side overloads also are not quite beneficial. Look at this clip the way Chilwell receives the ball. When you have a winger in these kinds of instances, he will be little against the opposition attack. But you see, when you have a fullback in these kinds of position, the only thing you can get is crosses, and fullbacks are not good 1v1 players. And that's why Pep Guardiola prefers having wingers in these advanced positions. Because when you have wingers in these advanced positions, they are more likely to take on fullbacks. Wingbacks are not quite great in this position since the only threat that they pose is making crosses and also their finishing is not quite the best. And that's why the reason I'm making this video is to emphasize that wingbacks can only make crosses in the ball and therefore you need to have aerially dominant forwards in those positions or forwards who know how to make runs. Another problem with Chelsea is that rather than shifting play quick, they like to recycle the ball slowly allowing the opposition to go back to their default position. See the route in which the ball takes, rather than just picking the ball and switching it quick. The only player who attempts these switches is Enzo Fernandez, but currently he's playing further forward. So if Enzo would play deeper, it will be better. And Sterling, when he receives the ball, the main thing he will do is that he will attack the byline and attempt to make these crosses. Sometimes making crosses with Chilwell, not even pushing through the right channel. From this clip, you can see that Chelsea prefer attacking down the right. And this is giving them an imbalanced attacking system, since now opponents need just to swarm the right hand side of Chelsea. And this effectively denies Chelsea the opportunity to create chances. From this clip here, you can see Sterling, Gusto, and Gallagher, who's now making the run in the space vacated by Sterling. You can clearly see how opponents have already shifted down the right-hand side, and Chelsea are overloading this position. Opponents know that Chelsea will not attack down this side, and therefore will try to limit Chelsea down that right side. In the left-hand side, the problem is Enzo Fernandez. Enzo Fernandez seems like he is not playing quite well as an advanced forward down the left-hand channel, and this is why. So from this clip here, you can see how Chelsea want to form their front five, with either Gallagher pushing up with Sterling keeping the width, but Enzo Fernandez is tasked to be the one occupying the left half space channel to free up spaces for the left winger to be free to receive the ball in space. But the left winger is always occupied and is always marked, man marked by the fullback because of Enzo Fernandez. Enzo Fernandez, rather than sticking to his position up the pitch, most of the time he likes to drop deep, vacate his position to receive the ball in these deep regions. And this is why I say that Enzo Fernandez needs to be starting as the second pivot because he likes to get on the ball most of the times and therefore when you leave him in this position he vacates his forward position isolating his left back 1v1 or 1v2 and this is indicated by the start since you can clearly see that only Chelsea attack down the left hand channel 29% of the time the lowest compared to Manchester City who attack it close to 34% of the time Looking also at the short conversion zones, Chelsea are only attempting shots in the 6-yard space at 11%, outside at 58%, and outside the 18-yard box at 31%. And this is indicated by this clip whereby Sterling attempts to make a cross, but nobody is making runs. Yet the 6-yard space is the best place to score goals. 
their conversion rate is also quite poor, indicating Chelsea's lack of clinical edge in front of goal. You can see here they attempt long-range shots which are not powerful that either end up hitting the bar and also you can see how they are not quite clinical in taking shots when they are supposed to also indicating one of the teething problems that Chelsea has. So Nicholas Jackson has been one constant attacker starting for Chelsea. But Nicholas Jackson has not been performing well. He has scored one goal from an XG of 3.6 and are performing his XG by negative 2.6. His expected goals per 90 is 0.66 but he has underperformed it by negative 0.46 indicating his lack of clinical edge in front of goal. And also another player who's been a key starter in attack is Raheem Sterling. Raheem Sterling also has not performed, has performed well, but his XG numbers are low. He has scored two goals from an XG of 1.7, indicating a plus 0.3%, and he has an XG of 0.41 per 90, with an XG of 0.36, indicating also that he's just playing in front or at the same par as his XG, which is not quite outstanding. Chelsea have lacked goals, especially after the injury to Christopher.